Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of On Attachment. In today's episode, we are talking all about sex and attachment and specifically how anxious and avoidant people differ when it comes to their experience of and how they relate to sexual intimacy. So this is a big topic. It's one that I have touched on before in the podcast, but not in recent history. Uh, And it's one that I do receive a lot of questions and DMs about people struggling with with something to do with their sexual dynamic and wondering whether the attachment dynamics between them and their partner have anything to do with it. And as I always say, I think if attachment styles determine how we experience and relate to intimacy, then I think when you look at it in that way, of course, that's going to affect how we relate to and experience sex because sexual intimacy for a lot of us is pretty high up in terms of vulnerability and intimacy. And so, of course, if our attachment wounds are triggered by vulnerability and intimacy in our relationships, then of course, sex is going to bring us into contact with those things in maybe a really accentuated way. And so as we're going to talk about today, a lot of the dynamics and strategies that we'll see in other aspects of relationships are very much front and center. And if anything can be even more pronounced and acute when it comes to the sexual relationship. And I think that can be really exacerbated that a stress that we feel and the sense of shame and brokenness can be exacerbated by the fact that there is so much shame around sex to begin with and we don't talk about it very much. So I think in my experience when people are struggling sexually there tends to be much more of an inclination to cover it up, not talk about it, avoid it, and then assume that you're the only one experiencing it because you haven't heard about it anywhere else, or it's not really visible to you in other people's relationships. And I'll just say at the outset, being in the privileged position of hearing a lot of people's stories and being on the receiving end of people's questions and worries, I can assure you that you're far from alone if you can relate to what we're going to be talking about today. So That's what we're going to be covering. I'm going to be sharing four key ways in which anxious and avoidant leaning people differ in their experience of sex and how they think about sex in relationships and more broadly. And as I said, I'm hoping that that will normalize these things to the extent that you're experiencing them and also point you in the right direction in terms of what you might need to work on, where your behavior is originating from within you, what maybe wounded parts or insecurities, what subconscious drivers are perpetuating those patterns and how you might be able to shift it towards something healthier and more fulfilling. Now, before we dive into today's episode, a final reminder about healing anxious attachment. Doors will be closing in a few days time for this round, and I'm not sure when the next round will be, possibly at the end of the year, possibly early next year. But I would love to have you inside the program. We have a whole module on secure sexuality for anxiously attached people, how you can not only understand these dynamics and your part in them, uh, but how you can cultivate a really secure sexuality within yourself first and foremost as a way to be more present and confident and really enjoy sex rather than using it as validation or a way to temperature check the relationship, which as we'll get to is very common among anxiously attached people. So if you're interested in joining Healing Anxious Attachment, I would love to have you head to my website or click the link in the show notes to join me and hundreds of others in this very special program. It's going to be a great round. I'm so excited for it. We've got a strong community component this time with a live online community and four live calls with me, which is more than ever before. So if you are feeling the pull, now is the time. Make sure you sign up in the next couple of days before registration closes because we won't be accepting anyone after the deadline. Okay, so let's talk sex and attachment. I have something that I term the anxious avoidant sexual spiral, which sounds like a very dramatic name, and it can be quite dramatic (laughs) in practice, but it's essentially the anxious avoidant trap that pursue withdraw dynamic as applied to sex. And I've done episodes about this before, but very briefly to recap, what we'll often see in a relationship is that there's a strong sexual emphasis to the connection at the beginning, lots of physical attraction. Maybe you're having really 
intense sex, really chemistry fueled and it's super exciting. And that feels great for both people, right? It feels great for the anxious partner because they tend to really prioritize and find sex to be a really important barometer for the overall connection. But also the anxious person loves feeling wanted. And so when they feel wanted at the start of the relationship, that feels really incredible. The avoidant partner just really enjoys that intimacy and feeling like they can express themselves in that way that is really intoxicating for them and can lead them to feel really attracted when they're able to have this strong, intense sexual connection with someone that can really fuel a lot of their you know, interest in the early stages of a relationship. But what tends to happen is that as things become more serious, so maybe when you go from casually seeing each other to exclusively seeing each other, or maybe when you go from exclusively seeing each other to moving in together, you know, depending on the time, it's going to be different for everyone. But as you tend to progress towards more of a steady, comfortable relationship with more expectation, more reciprocity, more of an emotional connection alongside the physical, the avoidant partner tends to start to pull away sexually. They tend to feel less attracted, less interested in sex. And inevitably that causes the anxious person to fire up, to freak out, panic, wonder what they've done wrong and escalate in their attempts to restore the sexual connection to what it was in part to alleviate their own fears that they've done something wrong or their partner's lost attraction because they're not good at sex or they don't like the way I look or they found someone else, all of these sorts of things. And inevitably then as the anxious person starts to ramp up their efforts, the avoidant person feels pressured and overwhelmed. And whether they realize it or not, that pressure is a real buzzkill in terms of their interest in sex, because avoidant people tend not to like feeling pressured to do anything and certainly not to feel a certain way. And so they become more avoidant with respect to sex and on and on that cycle goes. And that can cause a lot of distress and disconnection on both sides and leaving people feeling, is there something wrong with the relationship that we don't have the same effortless sexual connection that we enjoyed to begin with. So that's what I call the anxious avoidant sexual spiral, which is essentially just the pursuer distancer dynamic as applied to sex. Now, picking apart some aspects of that and diving a little deeper, I want to share these five key ways in which anxious and avoidant people differ when it comes to sex. And the first one is around the physical versus emotional intimacy. Now, I think that it would be fair to say that anxiously attached people struggle with being vulnerable around sex as much as avoidant people do. But even still, anxious people seek out sex both for the emotional connection and the physical intimacy. So there is this sense that sex is maybe the culmination of closeness with someone. And so for anxious partners, that's something that they seek out. And oftentimes there's no upper limit on how often or how much sexual intimacy an anxious partner would like, because it feels like there's really clear reinforcement of the bond. And so if I feel best when I'm connected to you, when am I more connected than when we're having sex or we've just had sex, right? That feels like kind of the apotheosis of connection. And so for someone who's anxiously attached, it feels very reassuring if there's a very vibrant sexual relationship because they think my partner's not going to leave me if they really enjoy having sex with me and we're having a lot of sex, right? That's a really surefire way for an anxious person to feel you know, close, connected, reassured and so for anxiously attached people, that tends to be a very high ranking priority kind of relationship need is for the sexual relationship to be there. And the flip side of that is that if there's something wrong with the sexual relationship, so to speak, if there's a sudden change in frequency or tone to the sexual relationship, then the anxious partner is going to take that as meaning something about the relationship as a whole. They really do tend to use sex as a barometer for the overall health of the relationship. On the other hand, the avoidant partner tends to be much more focused on the physical component of sex. And that's not to say they don't enjoy sex, but the idea of sex being this romantic, intimate, emotional experience is probably not only foreign to an avoidant partner, but also maybe 
quite uncomfortable. And we can see that in the way that an avoidant partner tends to distance when emotions, when intimacy and vulnerability get brought into the relational sphere as a relationship progresses, or maybe as the relationship becomes more comfortable, moves away from that initial sense of novelty and excitement and adventure and newness that comes with the relationship at the beginning as it settles into something a bit more predictable and safe. For a lot of avoidant people, they don't know how to reconcile that level of familiarity with sexual arousal, desire, attraction, which they do tend to experience as a mostly physical act rather than one that is heightened by emotional connection and in turn deepens the emotional connection. Uh, So that's a really key distinction between anxious and avoidant people in how they process this idea of emotional and physical intimacy. Okay, so the next key difference between anxious and avoidant people insofar as sex is concerned is what your nervous system tends to do during sex. So for anxiously attached people, you'll typically experience your whole body and system going into overdrive during sex, like a kind of overactive, mobilized, sympathetic nervous system stress response. So this will typically show up as really overthinking. So struggling to just be present and embodied because you're so stuck in your head. You may be thinking, what are they thinking? Are they enjoying themselves? How do I look right now? All of these sorts of insecurities. Am I doing this right? All of that is likely to be like very active in your mind in that kind of problem solving obsessing mode that will be familiar to so many anxious people outside of the bedroom, but you'll likely see that kind of experience very much front and center for you when it comes to sex. So in that same overthinking, very, very active mentally and unable to switch your mind off so that you can actually just relax and enjoy. On the flip side of that, avoidant people also really struggle with being present and embodied, but they tend to go the other way. And this really mirrors your respective stress responses anyway. So you've probably heard me talk about conflict, same thing, right? Anxious people dial up and they go into a very mobilized stress response, whereas avoidant people tend to numb out or dissociate. And you'll see that Sexually as well, for a lot of avoidant people, they struggle with presence, but because they're kind of numb, they might feel blank, not very present, not very engaged. It might feel if you're partnered with someone who is more avoidant that they're not really in the room, (laughs) that it feels like they're just totally vacant. And of course that can impede your ability to connect and really enjoy. And these things tend to reinforce each other. So if you're more anxious and you see your partner who's got their eyes closed or is, is just not really present, you can feel that they're energetically not really present, then that's going to send your insecurities really spiraling, wondering if they're having a good time, wondering if you're doing something wrong. And that takes you out of presence even more so. So we can see how those are responses bounce off each other insofar as sex is concerned. Okay. The next difference between anxious and avoidant people is that again, this kind of mirrors what we see outside of sex, which is that anxiously attached people will almost always focus to extreme degrees on their partner's experience during sex. So they're only concerned with their partner enjoying it. Uh, So they're very focused on giving pleasure to their partner and ensuring that everything is to their partner's preferences. Don't worry about me, whatever works for you. So long as you come out of this experience, having had a good time and feeling positively about it, that's all I need, right? And you can hear aspects of the broader relational dynamic in that. Don't worry about my needs so long as your needs are taken care of, so long as you're happy with me, then I'm happy, right? So it tends to show up for a lot of anxious people in sex. Uh, Whereas for avoidant people, they tend to be more focused on themselves. So they're focused on their experience. They're maybe less likely to go out of their way to take care of their partner unless they're specifically asked to. And they have this sense of, we'll just do the thing and I'll take care of me and I'll ask for what I want. And it's up to you to ask for what you want. I'm not going to go out of my way to you know, accommodate you or cater this to your preferences unless you specifically ask me to. Uh, and while that might sound, people might hear that and go, oh, wow, avoiding people is so selfish. I think it's just important to recognize that both of those ways of, of approaching sex are 
as always, at opposite ends of the spectrum, right? And what we really want is to be able to both focus on the other person and ourselves, to be able to advocate for our own pleasure uh, and our own preferences and our own experience while also obviously taking the other person into account and obviously wanting them to be enjoying themselves and their experience to be catered to as much as ours. So as always, we want to walk off the ledges at our opposite extremes and find our way into a healthy middle. Okay, the next key difference between anxious and avoidant people when it comes to sex is openness to having sex. So anxiously attached people will pretty much, now of course this is a huge generalization, but pretty much always be open to physical intimacy. Of course, within the parameters of life constraints, but it's very rare that an anxiously attached person is going to just be completely closed off to the idea of sex because there tends to be a general readiness for connection in the system of the anxiously attached person. So if their partner initiates some sort of physical intimacy, the anxiously attached person is probably going to be quite receptive to that. Whereas for avoidant people, they don't have that same simmer a lot of the time. They tend to be in their own world and it can be quite jarring for them to suddenly switch gears. So if you're the anxious partner and you initiate some sort of physical intimacy or sex with your partner in quite an abrupt way, they might really push that away and go, I'm not in the mood or not now or something else that feels quite dismissing and rejecting just because they struggle to switch gears quickly and they feel like that's a lot of pressure and I'm not perfectly ready and in the mood and so I'm not really open to it at all. And that's quite different to, you'll know this if you're more anxious, that you could probably be convinced or persuaded to get in the mood even if you're not immediately there because the idea of connection and physical intimacy, sex with your partner is such a, a positive one. It's something that you really value very highly. And so it's rare that you're going to pass up the opportunity, particularly if sex is something that feels strained in your relationship, all the more so that you're likely to want to be intimate with your partner because you feel like it's such an important thing. And that sort of leads me into the last one, which is Anxiously attached people, the more strange the relationship has been, the more you're probably going to want to focus on sex or the more interested you're going to be in sex uh, because you do see it as almost this panacea that alleviates a lot of your fears and insecurities about the state of the relationship. So if you're fighting a lot or things have felt disconnected or there's been other stuff going on between you that hasn't felt great. For you as an anxiously attached person, if you have sex, it's likely to feel like, ah, oh, okay, well, at least we had sex, right? That's a good sign. That means that things aren't too dire. They still love me. I feel reassured about the state of our relationship because we've had sex. For the avoidant partner, it's likely to go the other way. So if there's been some sort of relational disharmony, if you felt disconnected, they're likely to pull away more uh, and be less interested in sex rather than more. Because I think for a lot of avoidant people, again, whether they realize it or not, they can have this programming of everything has to be perfect in order for me to want to have sex. And if things haven't been great between us, I might just feel generally not particularly interested in being around you or being close to you because I have some negative associations around that at the moment. And so if I'm distancing more broadly, I'm certainly going to be distancing with respect to sex, particularly when I know that for you, it carries this emotional overlay that I'm not comfortable with. So I just tend to become more avoidant with respect to sex altogether when things are feeling a little fraught or tense between us. So those were five key differences in how anxious and avoidant people relate to sex. Uh, I hope that that's been interesting for you. I know that this is a topic that, as I said, a lot of people really struggle with and, and maybe isn't talked about enough. And I think that it's so important that we do talk about it and understand it so that we don't internalize whatever we're struggling with and think that there's something just fundamentally wrong with 
us as individuals or the relationship, because these really are very common dynamics. And as I said, there are things that can be done. It's not something that you're stuck with forever, but it just requires some awareness as a first step. And then obviously a willingness to be vulnerable and to take risks because vulnerability is risky. And particularly when it comes to sex, it can feel all the more so. So being willing to talk about it, being willing to interrupt our own default patterns to the extent that they might be making things worse rather than better and questioning those stories that we might carry around our worth being tied to whether someone wants us. I know that's a big one for anxious attachers and can make any of these dynamics feel so much more painful and can really cause us a lot of suffering because we think that we are not good enough and we need to change ourselves in order for our partners to want us. And as I've laid out today, there's a lot more going on than that. And oftentimes it's about another person's insecurities and their stuff rather than something that you've done or not done or something about you that you need to change in order to change the situation. So hope that that's been helpful. As I said, if this has resonated for you and you'd like support with this and all of the other stuff when it comes to anxious attachment, I would love to see you inside Healing Anxious Attachment. You've got a few more days to join. I'd love to see you there. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again next week. Thanks, guys.